Joe fucking Elliot from Def Leppard. Welcome to Radioactiva, man. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. We are so excited. As you can excited. see, I'm, um, I'm just taking a little break from the World Cup to do this. <laughs> I know. Uh, uh, how, how does the World Cup look for you so far? Well, from an Englishman's point of view, pretty good because we won 6-2. From a general neutral spectator's point of view, amazing to see Japan beat Germany. See Saudi Arabia beating Argentina is insane. I know, you know right? So, Unbelievable. You know, I mean, Spain just put Costa Rica to bed 7-0. So that's kind of like went went to, I guess, I, I didn't think they'd score seven, but I kind of figured they'd win. Um, so, yeah, I mean, so far, so good. You know, we got a month of this, so I'm really excited about it. Because we just did our last gig like three days ago. So we're done till we get to South America. So I've got all the time in the world to do this once I can put my three kids in front of Disney plus on a different TV, then I'm good. You know, <laughs> um, of course you're rooting for your team, but besides them, who would you support on the cup? I know I, I, I would take it game by game, you know, like today, obviously I would have been supporting Japan because they're the underdogs, you know, they have nothing against Germany, but it's just kind of more fun to think that way. And obviously if England get to play Brazil, I will not be supporting Brazil, you know, and, and, and so on and so forth. But um, I think I, I think a long shot potential winner is Belgium. Oh, and no yeah. one has ever told me about Belgium as a potential winner for the World Cup. So that's yeah. cool. Well, they, I mean, they, the squad is getting old, but they've got some incredible players. It'll be, I don't know, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, you know, we already said that Messi was going to lift the World Cup, but, you know, they couldn't even beat Saudi Arabia. So who knows? You know, it's that's the fun of it. It's it's a lottery ticket to a point. You know, it's all down to what you do on the day, you know. Exactly. Well, I, we have little time, so let's let, let's talk about... Yeah, music, music, music. Yeah. It's been, what, seven years since the previous Def Leppard record. Uh, what pushed you guys to record a new album? Well... We never say we're not going to do an album. It's just that touring really took over. You know, I mean, since 2014, when Def Leppard came out, we toured 2014, 15, 16, 17, and 18. We finished in November of 19, uh, 2019, and then COVID hit. And then we couldn't tour until 2022. So if you take COVID out of the equation, we've been touring so much that it was kind of difficult to come up with a new record. But once this stadium tour got postponed in 2020 and we knew that it was going to get postponed at least for 12 months because you can't do a stadium tour in winter. So, you know, we, you know what I mean? It's just logical. Yeah. We were getting together in March of 2020 for a month, just one month to get started on some new material. And we were going to start rehearsing in May for the June tour, but then we kind of figured it out and we were told, you know, by the end of, March going into April, it's very unlikely this tour is going to happen. Uh -huh. So we knew that that month that we put aside could get extended. But I'm not telling you the full story here because that month we were all due to be in the same room. We were going to do what every band always does, get together, sit in around, on, play each other some bits. Well, they weren't allowed to fly in to my studio in Dublin, which is what we always do. So we just made a game plan to do it over the phone, which is, you know, send MP3s to each other. We didn't even do Zoom. We never actually saw each other for two and a quarter years. Um, we're old school in that respect. Um, but we talked every day. I mean, every day on the phone. And Phil was eight hours apart from me. I was in Europe. He was in California. But it worked to our advantage because while he was sleeping, I was working on stuff. And I would send it to him. And while I was sleeping, he'd be working on it. And I wake up to his ideas and we just I came. It just worked out so beautifully that this record that we weren't able to, we were never thinking of making, we were starting to make. And we had nine songs on day one. And then we just kept going once we knew that the tour was over uh, till the following year. And then again to 2022, we had all the time in the world to just work on this record at, in our leisure time, if you like, you know, I did it. This very laptop that I'm talking to you on, on this very mm. table is where I sang all the vocals until I could get back to my studio in Dublin and do real ones. But the vocal on this guitar is actually the guide that I did sat right here on a microphone that I do my radio shows on. And that was the fun of making this record. It was so not the way you make albums, but wow, 
we did it. But it's just such a great story because once you listen to the record, I remember when I listened to Kick, I was like, wow, it it has this whole environment, like huge chorus, big riff, you know? And I, I, I wouldn't imagine that you could put together a song like that working remotely. Oh, yeah, absolutely we did. But it's not as far-fetched as it sounds. That that song was a last-minute addition to the album by Phil. We'd finished the album by two months. And then Phil phoned me up one day and he says, I've written this song. Do you want to hear it? I said, sure. I said, what are you going to do with it? He goes, I don't know. Just give it to somebody else. So I heard it and I went, you've got to be kidding me. We've got to do this. And we had the time, you know, because it was the end of 2020, early 2021. We weren't touring until 22. We knew that. Um, I said, let's do it, you know. So he'd already got the demo done. He'd sung it. He'd played guitars on it. There were backing vocals that he'd done with the guy he wrote the song with. So what he did, he sent the song to all of us. And all we did was I just replaced his vocal. Um, Sav replaced his bass. Vivian added some guitars. And we left Phil's voice in on certain bits just because he wanted it to sound like the New York Dolls. So it was just put together piecemeal. But every record we've made since On Through the Night has been made that way, except we were just sat in the room next door while one of us did our part. So while I'm singing, say, pour some sugar on me, mm -hmm. the rest of the guys are playing pinball in the, in the you know, down the road from the studio in the canteen, waiting for me to finish so they can come in and do overdubs and backing vocals or whatever. It's a lot of waiting around. So we just took that to the full extreme of like, they weren't in the same building. They weren't even in the same country. They were just waiting until I got a vocal finished. Then they would put some backing vocals on it at home. And it, the genius of this is not the band, it's Ronan McHugh, who was our producer engineer. He has a little studio in his bottom of his garden where he gathered it all together and glued it all together and edited it all together. Um, and he was the guy that pulled this off. You know, the, here's the beauty of it, though. We could be working on five different songs at the same time. So the band weren't literally waiting around. You could pick and choose what you wanted to do today. Which one do I want to sing? I want to sing Let's Guitar, this guitar. I want to sing that one. Tomorrow I'll sing Kick, or I'll just take a, oh, I've got a sore throat. I'm not going to sing for a week. You know, so everybody just did it at their own leisure. Did four or five takes of a performance, let Ronan edit between them and pick the best bits, and boom, we had a record. It was the most fun we've ever had making an album. We've already told the whole world, because we had so much fun doing it, this is how we will carry on working. Because here's the other thing, you know, we're not 21 anymore. We've all got families. We've all got kids. When we tour, it's a big responsibility to be away from your family for a long time. We can take the equation of being away from your family for a long time when we're recording out that whole lifestyle thing. Mm -hmm. So everybody gets to stay at home for all the time that they're recording, if that's what they want to do. Um, I mean, I was always a good host. They stayed at my place. They, I was, they were great guests. They weren't messy. But the fact is that they had to live at my house for a month at a time, away from their kids, away from their wife, away from whatever their home life was. Because we tour so much, the fact that we could take that out of our life and record individually and make a record as good as we did, we know that we can mm -hmm. do even better. So it's it's a great way to work, you know. Tell me about uh, a song you just mentioned from the album, This Guitar. I really liked it. I, I think I read in Rolling Stone maybe that it's actually the track, it's like a few years old and it, you, oh, yeah. you just never get to work on it. It's 20 years old next year. And what's <laughs> the story? Why? Well, Phil, old? we I think we just finished the X album or we were nearly coming to the end of the X album and Phil had written this song and he played me the demo and I said, this is a great song. But we all agreed that it didn't work for X, it would have been the wrong kind of song. So it sits in, you know, on a shelf gathering dust, metaphorically speaking. Mm -hmm. And then we don't make a um, a new recording of, of new material until Sparkle Lounge in 2008. You know, you kind of forget about it. And then halfway through that session, those sessions, oh my God, what about this guitar? Ah, it's too late now. It doesn't work with the songs we've already written. And then the same thing happened in 2014. Um, but when he came to this record, on day one, when I said to Phil, what have you got? And he said, I've got three songs. I said, no, you don't. You've got four. 
And he went, what? I said, this guitar, I don't care what you say, we're doing it. And he went, all right, fine, <laughs> you know. So I had three, he had four, so I've had two. We had nine songs to start, oh, just get the ball rolling. But this guitar was a pivotal song because everything else we did, you know, whether it be SOS or Kiss That Rocks or Kick or Fire It Up were what you'd call classic Dev Leopard. What we were doing with songs like Goodbye For Good This Time, Angels, uh, From Here To Eternity, and specifically this guitar, and Lifeless, in fairness, they were a little bit more left field than anything we'd done in the past, which is exactly what we wanted to do as a band we are now. We, we've we we've watched from a distance how Fleetwood Mac just came out of nowhere with rumours. It was nothing to do mm -hmm. with the Peter Green years. When with the biggest band in the world at the time, the Eagles did this greatest hits record and then followed that with Hotel California. You're like, holy crap. These records are monumental albums in the history of music, never mind those bands. So why can't we do the same thing, you know? Um, so we just worked and worked on this guitar. We knew it had a bit of a country kind of feel to it. So Vivian did some lovely slide guitar on it. We put some pedal steel on it. And then it just came into our orbit. You know, Alison Krauss, who was a huge Def Leppard fan for decades, was working with Robert Plant, who I was talking to about soccer. And then our manager happened to just bump into Alison's manager in Nashville and mentioned we were making a new record. And two and two became this like, oh, well, you know, she wants to sing with her boys, she's welcome. Then she got in touch and Robert said something. And all of a sudden, she's like, yeah, I'd love to do it. So we didn't know which song to give her. We had the two country-ish songs in Lifeless and this guitar. So we sent them both. And she literally said, I can't pick. I like them both. So I just said, do them both. So she did. But the work that she did on this guitar turned a very good song into an absolutely fantastic song. You know, the queen-like backing vocal mm -hmm. arrangements that, that her and her son put together, because her son's an arranger. And he got heavily involved in the in the arranging of it. She said, you can take out any bits you don't like. And we're like, are you kidding me? We love it all. It's fantastic. It's taken the song to a whole new dimension that we couldn't have done on our own. Um, so, you know, and that's a song that at the time was 19 years old, you know. Oh, sorry, 17 years old as we started recording it. But it just goes to show you it's a timeless piece of work. Rock music in general is because it's legacy music these days. It's timeless. McCartney, The Stones, The Who, it's timeless, you know? And it doesn't matter whether the song was written yesterday or whether it was written 17 years ago, nobody had ever heard it. So as far as the world's concerned, that side of us, it's a new song. Um, that's a but we're not afraid to tell people it's actually 20 years old. Um, and that's a great now, story, man. Now's the right time to, to tell that story because now is the right time to record that song. What what makes this time so important to record a new record? I mean, you're the flipper. You've done some of the greatest rock and roll hits in history. Some of them who are still being sang and played on the radio. Uh, you you know it better than me. <laughs> so uh, many of of the bands you you guys sort of been grew up with stop recording new track new songs, but you still are working and tireless, tirelessly still doing new music. Yeah. Why? Why did you guys decided to just keep because going? Because it's what we do. You, think? you know, when we got together, yes, playing in front of an audience was priority. That's what every band wants to do because we're all show offs. I mean, come on, let's be honest. But you can't get up on stage unless you write some songs. Nobody's going to be a cover band forever. So you want to write songs. So it's in your DNA because the bands that you grew up wanting to kind of mimic the Who, the Stones, the Kinks, And, you know, the Beatles. And then as you get a little older, like you're 10, 12 years old, you start listening to David Bowie, T-Rex, Queen, Mott the Hoople, Slade. And then it's the punk scene, the Pistols, the Clash, all these. Like, you see these bands, they're writing all their own songs. It's what you do. Now, it's only recently that there's been bands that are 30, 35, 40 years old. There were no 40-year-old bands when we started out. The Zeppelin was still together. They'd only been together maybe eight, nine years when we formed, you know, those stones and the who were probably 15 years old. I mean, it's crazy to think. Um, 
So there were no legacy artists. So you, it's in your it's in your mindset from being a teenager that if you're in a band, you're expected to write. And as we got older, we just never lost that hunger to write. We've always done it. And I, I can be honest with you right now. I've got a head full of songs that are driving me crazy because I can't record them yet, you know. They're all sitting on this thing in a little recording file, me going, uh -huh. da, 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 and then typing in a lyrical idea and saving it to a file until I can get around to doing it. The day that I don't have any new songs, I'll dry up, as we all will, but we just keep pushing each other. Phil calls me all the time, I've got this new song. <laughs> Good. You want me to finish it or are you going to do it? You know, And some, you know, like on the new album, Liquid Dust, he did all on his own. You Rock Me did all on his own. But then he came to me with Lifeless and he said, I don't have anything except a chorus for this. Fine, I'll do it. Um, Sav was the same with Take What You Want. He didn't have the lyrics, so I did it. Um, and uh, 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 SOS Emergency, I finished Phil's thing off. I wrote the lyrics for that. Same thing with uh, A Kiss That Rocks. So, you know, sometimes he'll write an entire song. Sometimes I write an entire song. Sav wrote From Here to Eternity on his own, but I co-wrote the opening track with him, you know? So we've all got these ideas. Sometimes they're half finished. Sometimes they're totally finished. You just need time at home to work on them. And we had that, you know, in, in spades while we were sitting around in COVID. But a lot of the song ideas were already kind of already there because we finished touring November 19. We were going to get together in March. So everybody had been home for four months. So once they'd got the obligatory game of golf out of the way or dinner with a wife, or, you know, took the kids in because you've not seen them for six months, you kind of go back to work. And going back to work when you're not touring is writing songs. Um, I did, I mean, I even did the Down and Outs album where I wrote nine brand new songs all written on a piano and put that album out in 2019. You know I mean? So my head is always churning up new ideas. And that's one of the reasons that we keep writing is because we can't stop. We, yeah. we like to challenge our history. Pour some sugar on me and photograph and rock of ages, love and hate collide. Let's get rocked. They may well be our most well-known songs, but we have to think as artists that they're not necessarily the best songs we'll ever write. We have to challenge ourselves to think we could write a better song. It may not be as popular and it will always fight the history of a song that's 30, 40 years old, but we haven't necessarily written our best song yet. So that's what we keep challenging ourselves to do. Cool. Thank you very much. We really look forward to see you guys here in Colombia once again. You played once in 97, as I recall. Yes. I very and you know, you the thing I remember anything? the most, you know, the thing I remember the most about that gig was the military presence at the venue. But more importantly, the day before the gig, we played a game of football against some locals and Sav scored a 30 yarder and it was on the six o'clock news on TV. <laughs> yeah, everybody who remembers that. Yeah. Everybody I wish I could find that. I wish I could find the footage because it was a uh, cracking goal. And we I, won I, the film, you know? I, I don't know if there's any way to find a, um, the footage. I wouldn't even remember what channel it was, but it was the day before the show. I know some of the people who played on that game because they work at a radio station. Well, if you ever find it, please, if you can get the clip, I would love to see it. Well, once again, thank you very much. Have a very nice day. My pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you next year. Enjoy you. the World Cup as best you can. Will do. Bye. Bye-bye.